Hello dear my colleagues. This is Şükrü Akyüz. First, I would like to thank to the Metronic for this kind invitation. I would like to be there and discuss this presentation live, but unfortunately, because I caught COVID-19, I must present in this way. My voice is not healthy, sorry for this in advance. Our topic is provisional stenting. First, I am going to make a brief summary of the technique, then present three cases. This is my disclosure. Provisional stenting or the one stand strategy is the fundamental of bifurcation stenting. In the provisional stenting strategy, after wiring the main vessel and the side branch, crossover stenting in the main vessel is performed. If side branch is not compromised, then procedure is finished. If compromised, then we perform balloon angioplasty. If the side branch is well expanded, we end here. If not, then we go with implanting the second stand in the side branch. Recommended techniques are T and TAP or CLOT. Although both can be preferred in any case, CLOT is more suitable for the angles less than 70 degrees, T TAP is more suitable for the angles between 70 to 90 degrees. Please note that when side branch is compromised after crossover stenting, we do not go directly with the bailout stenting. Before it, we try only balloon angioplasty. Some operators prefer to leave crossover stent struts in the side branch ostium uh, because if side branch is not compromised, it is recognized that opening the ostium does not result in better clinical outcomes. However, in case of a large main vessel or side branch, such as left main stem, most operators open the ostium of side branch so that there will be no challenge when performing PCI in the future if needed. So, they perform two-step kissing predilatation, as you see here. An alternative method to kissing balloon dilatation is pot side pod technique. It should be emphasized that the pot side pod technique which allows us to use one less balloon, is used only in one stand for the provisional strategy, not in two stand strategies. It is recommended to enter side branch through the distal strut, because as you can see here, entering the side branch from the distal strut provides struts to move inside the side branch. By this way, protruded parts of the second stand into the main branch will be significantly less than that of the proximal entry. Now let's look at our cases. The first one is a distal left main stem case. Here we see that the lesion extends into the proximal LAD, but the CX ostium appears intact. First we wired both branches and then we implanted a stent sized one to one according to the LAD. We make sure that the stent length allows for left main stem coverage of a segment longer than the shortest available balloon we have. Uh, then we performed pot with an NC balloon selected one to one according to the left main stem. Now CX takeoff appeared clear. We could finish at this stage, but we preferred to open it. So after rewiring, we first dilated the CX ostium with an NC balloon, again one to one according to the CX diameter, and then we perform kissing balloon dilatation with NC balloons one to one according to the size of the branches. Then, to correct ovality in the left main stem, we repeated the pot and then finished the procedure. The second case is like the first one, the lima is occluded, there is no critical stenosis in the CX, but it is not as clear as in the previous case. There is some plug appearance in the ostium of CX, so we wired the both branches. After predilatations in the LAD and left main stem, we first stented LAD mid lesion, then placed the second stem extending into the left main stem. After performing pot. Severe stenosis developed in the CX takeoff. Hence, we performed a two step kissing balloon dilatation. After final port, we finished the procedure. And this is the last case.
After wiring both branches, we place the stand in the main branch. We expanded the proximal stand part with pot. However, over 75% stenosis developed at the side branch osteum. Therefore, after high pressure dilatation of the side branch, we performed kissing balloon dilatation and then finished the case after final pot. In summary, we prefer provisional stenting for the types of Medina classes which include number 0, except Medina 011, where V stenting is usually recommended. For the 111 cases, one of these two stent techniques over provisional technique is recommended. Latest myocardial revascularization guidelines had a weak recommendation of DK crush technique over provisional stenting in left main stent cases. But this recommendation should not be read as all left main cases, but only for true left main bifurcations. Why it is a class 2 bead recommendation rather than class 2A or 1 may be explained partly by the fact that provisional technique is the simplest and DK crush is the most challenging one. Therefore, European Bifurcation Club white paper released in 2020 states that efficacy of the DK crush has been proven only when practiced by operators with high experience. The trials in favor of DK crush over provisional technique are also criticized for the suboptimal technical details in the provisional stenting group, such as insufficient number of patients in whom predilatation and kissing balloon dilatation were performed. Some operators also advocate it is clearly not reasonable to leave a Medina 111 case without stenting. In summary, as the father of minimalism in architecture, Ludwig Mies stated, less is more. This philosophy may generally be applied to all areas of life, even to bifurcation stenting. But I used the word generally on purpose because Albert Einstein modified this quotation a bit as make everything as simple as possible, but not simpler. Thank you.